In this video, you'll learn how to install Docker Community Edition on Ubuntu 2204, known as Jammy Jellyfish. We'll install the latest version of Docker from the official Docker repository. Let's open a terminal window. First, let's update the list of packages by running the apt update command. Since this is a privilege command, you'll need to run sudo and supply your password. We see a bunch of new updates are available. The next few commands are quite long and easily mistyped, so I'll copy and paste them to avoid mistakes. We'll need to install some packages that allow us to secure the connection when we retrieve packages over HTTPS. So let's run that command using sudo apt install and the appropriate packages, transport HTTPS, CA certificates, and software properties. We're prompted to install the new packages. Let's answer yes, and the installation will proceed. Next, we'll add Docker's official GPG or new privacy guard key to our system. We'll use curl to get the key and we'll pipe the result into a call to GPG that will store locally in the specified file. Next, we'll set up the repository and add the Docker repo to app sources by echoing the string with the GPG key information and writing it to docker.list. And let's update the list of packages again for the addition to be seen. And we want to make sure we're going to install from the Docker repo and not from the default Ubuntu repo. We can verify that by running apt cache policy docker ce. We see docker ce is not installed, but it's a candidate for installation. Finally, we can install Docker by running sudo apt install docker ce. We'll answer yes to perform the installation, and we're done. Docker is now installed and should be running in the background. We can verify that it's running with the command sudo system control status docker. We can see the Docker daemon is active and running. And we can verify that from the command line by running docker, and everything looks good. Let's try to download an image and start up a container by running docker run hello dash world. And we get an error. If you see this error on your system, it means your user ID doesn't have permission to run the command. We can fix that by prefixing all our commands with sudo, but that gets annoying and there is a better way to do it. We'll use the user mod command to add our user ID to the Docker group. We'll run sudo user mod dash ag docker and use the variable dollar curly braces user to specify the user ID. In my case, dollar curly braces user is my user ID begin secure. To see the change, you could either log out and log back in, or you could run the command su space dash space and your user ID or dollar curly braces user to specify the current user ID. We'll have to type in our password because we're using su. This will get you a new shell as that user with the changes in effect. If we type in the command groups, we can see that our user, in my case, begin secure, has been added to the Docker group. Now, if we run Docker again, we can see everything's working. And we can also run full commands without the need to prefix everything with sudo. Let's try to execute the run command we just typed in again by typing in docker run hello dash world. This will check in the local repo to see if the image exists. If it doesn't, Docker will go out to Docker Hub and download the image by running the pull command. Once the latest version of the image has been pulled, it will run the image in a container and produce the messages on the screen, including the message hello world. So we know our Docker installation process was successful. We can search through Docker Hub for images using the search command and a string. Let's search for Postgres by running docker search Postgres. We see a bunch of images listed, but we're only interested in the official image, the one with a bunch of stars. All the other images should be viewed with suspicion. Since we don't know who constructed them or where they came from, Using any of them could pose a security risk. Let's pull down the official image by specifying the name of the image we want with the command docker pull postgres. Our image is downloaded and we're all set up for the next video where we'll take a look at using Spring to connect to a Postgres database. When that video is available, I'll have a link here. But in the meantime, if you found this video useful, please subscribe and remember to always begin secure.